welcome you guys. You know, I like to say that we have the hardest job as math teachers. Uh, we chose this life, but it is not the easiest subject matter to teach. And I don't know about you, but the learning loss in the last probably a year and a half, we had a rough year. I know I had a rough year in math this past year for sure. I would love to hear, getting started off, you guys are sharing where you're from. I love that. We are all over. I would love for everyone to share below what level of math or subject areas you are currently teaching. So if you want to go ahead and drop in below. So I am in New Jersey and I am teaching, I teach ninth grade algebra and geometry. And usually I have a couple different levels of algebra. I'll teach like a regular level and I usually have an honors level. Um, and then I usually just have the regular level of geometry. I know so many of us teach so many different grade levels and some of you I can see right away. Oh my gosh, you're teaching so many different subject areas. Gosh, it is so tough. We're teaching, Cindy's teaching sixth, seventh, and eighth. The amount of teachers I have met over the years that teach, oh my gosh, so many more of you are saying the same thing, or high school teaching all levels. They put us to work, man. They put us to work. So, uh, you know, seeing other teachers teaching so many different grade levels, it is a, a tremendous amount of work. And if you've been using Quizlet and kind of setting up study sets for your classes, some of the work is done. And if you haven't used Quizlet at all to set up some of these for your math classes, I promise you today, you're gonna walk away feeling like, okay, I can start to build my study set library. I can start to have all of this information. And there's gonna be this mix of things that you are going to wanna to create. You're gonna to wanna to create study sets specific to the math subject areas that you teach. Well, we're also gonna be a little bit more efficient and grab some study sets from other teachers. And you know what we might find here, and if you're you know seeing other teachers that teach the same as you, um, you know may, there could be a connection here and say, hey, I I teach this subject area. Let's say someone in here is teaching seventh grade math, and you're like, I have actually already made a ton of seventh grade math Quizlet study sets. Here's my user account. If anyone wants to look at my study sets, go grab them because we have to help each other out. Right. And so I'm going to show you what that looks like today, what that looks like, of course, you know, grabbing someone else's study set, how I might want to tweak someone else's study set. Um, but then, of course, like, you know, how do we really make it work for math? So I'm going to guide us all through. We have a beautiful 40 minutes right now. I just wanted to kind of give us a nice introduction before we really get started. And um, Go ahead, because we know that things get lost in the chat as far as questions go. So if you ever have anything particular as a question, make sure you drop it in the Q&A tab. That way I will see it for sure. You know, things get lost in the chat. Let's keep the chat as like a beautiful connection. And you guys are already um, just sharing so much. And math teachers, we, we just know what a tough ride we have. It it's, We have a tough, tough job. So we want to make things as best we possibly can. All right, so let's get started, you guys. So Quizlet math, we're gonna talk about tips and tricks to make the best Quizlet study sets for math teachers, because that is what we are here for. So you, um, some of you guys already know me or you've seen some of my other sessions or maybe you were with me in Quizlet 101 yesterday. My name is Rory Yakubov. I'm a high school math teacher in New Jersey. I've been teaching for 16 years. Um, I'm going into my 17th year. I can't believe it. It is just mind blowing to me. I'm currently teaching algebra one and geometry. I really just teach freshmen. So I have ninth grade level algebra and geometry. I know a lot of you teach algebra in the grade or, um, you know, maybe you're a geometry teacher for 10th grade, but I am very ninth grade, excuse me, ninth grade specific. I've been a Quizlet user for over five years now. And um, it was just something that kind of fell into my lap. I was scrolling around one day on the teacher Instagram world and stumbled upon an English teacher using Quizlet and playing Quizlet Live with her students. And I follow a ton of teachers on Instagram that are not math teachers because I always feel like we can pull ideas from other places and, you know, apply them into our classroom. So I saw this and I was so intrigued. And then I was thinking, well, you know, 
why, how would I use Quizlet in my classroom? Because Quizlet's set up for terms and definitions, right? So yes, I have a vocabulary I want my students to know, but you know, do I really just want to focus on words? Like we have problems to solve here. And so I kind of started playing around with Quizlet and I realized, hey, the same way they're putting in terms and definitions, I can put in my math problems and solutions. And we're not talking about the crazy problems. Okay, guys, we're not talking about our lengthy word problems. We're talking about kind of like that drill and kill practice that maybe we would have put on a worksheet or you would have had a study guide ready to go for your students. And you're saying, you know what? I want to make this digital now because we all know all of our students, they have those phones in their pockets or in their hands during our class 24 seven. And we want them to have access to all of our materials and be able to study. And like, I like to tell them, we, I want them to use their technology powers for good, right? We want them to use your powers for good. Not, you know, necessarily just scroll and be on TikTok. I want them to be able to scroll through their, you know, phone and say, oh, the Quizlet app is right here. I have a math quiz tomorrow. Let me hop on to Mrs. Yakubov's Quizlet page and let me just do some quick studying. And so that's what I have found have been has been the most rewarding situation or a student coming to me using my Quizlet study set, you know, the morning of a quiz or test, right? Like my last minute friends. But they say like, I went through this whole study set, but this particular problem, Mrs. Yakubov, can you show me how to do this? And that just shows me the amazing effort. So, you know, it took a lot of time for me to put my Quizlet study sets together and amass my year's worth of Algebra 1 um, content that I'm going to show you. But, um, you know, I'm just going to show, show you guys how easy it is to really put them together and what an impact it really does make. So today, our agenda is why Quizlet, how it's helped me making a study set, copying and editing, editing creating your own classes and the impact. And this was my basic same agenda for Quizlet 101. So if you had joined me yesterday, you might notice that it's the same, but everything today is going to be more math specific for sure. Yesterday was just very super general. So why Quizlet? Now, as math teachers, we know, and I know, I used to print out packets and packets of review. I'd be like, oh, we have a quiz. Here's a packet of a review. And a lot of kids would actually do the review packet um, you know, maybe I'd photocopied like three pages back and front and back per kid. But a lot of kids I know weren't doing it. And so it was me just wasting paper. And I wasn't ever checking the review because I had built in the answer key there. So I knew I wanted them to be able to review on their own time, check the answer key, see how they're doing. But we know with packets, it's a one and done deal. So when I stumbled on Quizlet, I realized I can just easily switch over at least all of the review sections into um, Quizlet study sets. And, you know, not only can they practice once, you know, with a packet, it's one and done, right? They go through the paper, they fill it out, they can check their answers, what are they gonna do? Rereading it is helpful, but it's not as impactful as actually rewriting and going through the steps like we know. With Quizlet, if they have the problems and they go through the study set and maybe they're doing the work on a separate sheet of paper or a dry erase board that maybe they have at home or in your classroom and they go through the study set, maybe in a couple of days later, they can actually restart the study set again and redo their practice or study in so many different ways. And it's a forever study resource. And that's what's so beautiful about um, what I feel like Quizlet offers for us and what any teacher can, can do. So, you know, making a math study set is going to be really easy for us. And after this slide, I'm going to go into my Quizlet account. And if you want to go into your own Quizlet account right now, um, go to quizlet.com, log in. Um, if you haven't made a Quizlet account just yet, if you are a total newbie, make sure that you, you know, either watch that, rewatch this later um, while you're following through the steps, or if you want to create an account right now, but make sure you always select that it's a teacher account. Making a math study set, um, you can do it in minutes, absolute minutes. But the biggest deal with making a study set for math specific is to make sure that we put the problem on the right and the solution on the left. Now, when you are studying Quizlet, what will usually happen is that the definition, what's over here on the right, the definition is what gets put on the screen. The student then has to select the proper term or has to know what the term is. So 
what we want to do as math teachers is we want to put the problem, the math problem in the definition spot and actually put the solution in the term spot. Now, it is totally possible Quizlet does let you switch your cards. Like, let's say you set up a study set, you put the problem on the left and the answer on the right. And you're going, oh my gosh, I, I have to delete this and restart. Now, there is an option I can show you where it will switch it all for you. But when you open up any of my study sets, if you, if you want to use any of them, you'll notice that every problem is on the right and every solution is on the left. It, that's how it works for math. There's also uh, different languages to use for Quizlet and there's a math language. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like because that's gonna get you a bunch of math symbols. Um, and it just gets better all the time. Quizlet grows, you know, every, every time I log into Quizlet, I am, well, not every single time because that would be too overwhelming, but very often when I log into Quizlet, I see a new feature or I see another option for me or I go, oh my gosh, I think that's new. So they're constantly improving and adding things. I'm just so excited to see where it goes for math because the math language that they have there with the symbols, it just gets better and better. I would keep your problems brief. So again, these are not going to be for our lengthy word problems. These are not going to be for our really convoluted ones. Um, but you can save that for you know, other types of practice. But making a math study set is going to be really powerful if it's truly just problem, answer, and all of that. Now, paid version. You're going to see when I show my account, I do have the paid version. Um, I started out with the free version, and I used the free version for about a year. And pretty much everything I'm going to show you, you mostly can do with the free version. Paid version, though, is when you can add in graphs. You can add in your pictures. So maybe you want to put in a number line image. You want to put a graph image. Uh, you want to put some kind of diagram image, kind of copy and paste and throw it in there. That is with the paid version. And if you're on the fence with the paid version, because at first when I was a new Quizlet user, I wasn't sure either. Like, do I need to do this? And I'm not pushing it at all. So don't get me wrong there. Um, spoiler. I, I would be crazy to find out if they don't do it this year. They always run a Black Friday sale. That's what I waited for, me personally. So that's just a little personal tidbit. I waited until like Black Friday sales or what is it, Cyber Monday? Um, and they had a sale on it. And that's when I kind of just pulled the trigger. And that was four years ago. And ever since, um, it's just a, a yearly renewal. And so that's what I do. But that's, a, again, if you want to add pictures and things like that. I would encourage you every study set you make to at least have 10 problems. I probably should have made that 12. Um, Quizlet Live runs on a max of 12 questions, so that would be a really good thing for us to have, but at least you want to have, you know, 10 problems or more, and strategically naming your study sets so students can find them easily. So I'm going to go ahead and go right into Quizlet right now, and so I, if I was going into Quizlet.com, and I'm going right into my own page account. So my account is actually Quizlet.com backslash Math. That's my username. And when I go into my study sets, um, and I arrange them by created. So when I go to my study sets, and anyone here could go right onto my page, Math backslash sets, um, what you will see is I've strategically named all of my study sets in the same formatting, because I want my students to be able to find things very easily. Yes, they can search. There's a search option here for search your sets. But I found that if I do algebra chapter one, algebra chapter two test, algebra chapter three test, that when they get alphabetized by created, it's beautifully easily for them to find. So I, in the beginning of the year, I show this to my students. I show it at back to school night, and it blows the parents away. And I tell the student, my students, I'm like, I'm throwing you all under the bus right now because when it's back to school night and I show this to your parents and I show them how I have everything ready to go for the whole school year, you have no excuse not to be able to study. And that might seem like a big task for anyone who's brand new to Quizlet. So don't feel stressed at all right now for that. I've taken so much time to put these together. Um, but, and I just edit them and make them better. But my students can scroll through and they're going to see that I have every chapter test review. I have final exam midterm reviews. I then have quiz reviews already made. Um, and you can see each one there. I have, I started to do geometry. If you're a fellow geometry teacher, making geometry study sets just takes me so much longer. So they've been a little bit neglected. I need to add to them. Um, 
But starting here where it says lesson one one. So for my algebra students, I just, I didn't even name them algebra. I just said, you know what? If I make every study set and I start it with lesson and then the lesson number, then it'll be so organized for them. So it'll be very, very easy. And so what you'll see is that all of my study sets start in that same fashion and it's really easy for them to find. Okay, so that is something that I would strongly suggest to everyone um, when you are creating study sets is to really strategically name them. Maybe don't name them just the title of the lesson, but maybe put in, you know, a lesson number in, in the front, perhaps. Okay, so if I was to open up one of my study sets, so lesson uh, 1.7, is it a function? So this is a great example of this study set that I had created that's got... Um, a mix of problems and answers. And you can see they're just yes or no questions on this one. So a list of ordered pairs, an equation of a specific line. It's just yes or no, is it a function? And then I had also entered in pictures of a mapping, a graph, a table um, for my students to be able to answer. And so this is what one of my study sets looks like. And some of them have some diagrams in them and some of them are just truly problems and the solutions. Um, and, you know, grabbing a study set would be really easy for them to take a look at. And I'm going to go over in just a moment all the different ways that you can learn. When you go to create, so if you want to follow along with me, if you have your Quizlet account opened, or if you want to just kind of watch this and remember, you're going to be able to rewatch this session as many times as you want. I personally would suggest when you're creating a new study set, you know, name it strategically. If you teach 6th, 7th, and 8th, which I saw so many of you guys do, maybe you want to start each one with grade 7 and then dash or grade 8 dash so that they start getting separated immediately like that. You know, if you were doing lesson 1-1 one, one, and lesson 1-2, but you teach multiple grade levels, that could get confusing. So maybe you want to start something, I would start with algebra lesson 1.2, order of operations. And you don't have to put a description in. I actually tend to not put a description in. Um, I don't feel like I need to, or it's not anything more specific. So I feel like that's good. You can add a label and a diagram. Anywhere you guys see this Q in the, in the yellow with the plus, that's part of the pro version or the plus version. You can see in the corner here, it says Quizlet Plus. That's just something in the paid account, but you'll see I kind of bypass a lot of them because you can work right with the free account, no problem. So now when I'm looking at the actual study set itself, like I mentioned, what you want to do, because the way Quizlet works is it puts the definition up in front and then wants you to select the proper term. So if the definition is what the student sees, that's where your problem goes. So if I wanted to say, hey, do three times five minus two, and I'm just making it super basic. That's where my problem is going to go. And then my solution, I'm going to put 13 over here. Now, you guys, you better promise me, if I make any mistakes, any math mistakes, we're all in this together, right? We're supportive of each other. You're not going to come for me if I make any math errors. Okay, so super basic, right? Um, if you have a pro account and you want to add an image, that's where it would be here. You can see there's other like bold, italics, underline, highlighting tools. Again, that, that's why... It's in that yellow. So if you don't have that on your screen, it's part of the plus um, option. What I'm showing you, everyone can do. Um, but what I'll notice here, it does say choose language, right? So this is defaulting right now to English because when I set up my account, I had defaulted, I had set it default to English. But where it says choose language, um, maybe I want it to be math instead. And when I click it to math, it looks a little different. Let me show you. So here's what 13 looks like in math symbols. But if I was to switch it back to English, you'll see it does look a little different. So it does change the font into the mathy text. But over here in this next question, maybe I want to grab an exponent, right? So maybe I want to say, what is four? And I want to grab to the second power. So where I see English, I'm going to click on that. I'm going, you can either search for math symbols. It's coming up for me because it's an, a frequent language that I use. I would click on math symbols. And when I do that, now when I put my cursor after the four, you'll get an automatic drop down. 
Okay, so after you select math symbols as your language, you're going to get an automatic drop down. I'm going to zoom my screen also a bit here for us so you get a little bit of a better look. I hope that helps you. And so you can see you've got so many mathematical symbols and some symbols that I myself wouldn't even really need to use in my classes, but you can see you've got your plus or minus symbol and you've got your square root symbol. Now your square, I'm sorry, your radical symbol. So that radical symbol isn't going to go over the entire problem. So what I tend to do is when I'm using that for right now, I put parentheses around my expression that I want to be under the radical. Um, other symbols that I tend to use a lot are, let me scroll down, oh, the angle symbol. So my geometry teachers that want the angle symbol that is there. Um, I'm going to scroll down. You have your less than or equal to, your greater than or equal to. You have your set notation. You have some fractions here that are built in. Now, these numbers that are here, these are your superscript and your subscript. Okay, so that's why it says zero, zero, one, one, two, two. So I want you to take a close look, ready? I wanna put in four squared. So I picked the two that is my superscript and you can see on my screen right now, it gave me four squared. Whereas if I was to click on the second two, I wanna show you that's your subscript. So when you're doing you know, sequences and you wanna say a sub two, a sub three, you've got the superscript and subscript for each number here. Also, they give you a variable of n. So very often when I'm doing my arithmetic sequences, my geometric sequences, I'm doing A sub N. Um, and so that is there. You have your um, F for your function notation. You have a bunch of Greek letters here. And there's our friend Pi hanging out. And, you know, Quizlet has this for right now, and they're continuing to grow for sure. So if there's a symbol that you're like, hey, I'm a math teacher, I need this, I would always be reaching out to Quizlet to ask them. Um, to, jo to add in some more. So let's say I did four squared plus five. So four squared plus five, my answer is 21. I like to put a space there in between two. So those are our math symbols. So let's say I went ahead, I entered in you know, a bunch of problems and I'm gonna make these super boring problems right now. Three minus one is two. Um, let's see, five times five plus five is 30, okay? And I, let's say I just make this study set. I think you get the point, okay? And you can type in whatever you want, whatever words, whatever numbers you would want. And then I press create. So let's say I've made the problem that I wanted to make. I press create. Quizlet automatically gives you the option as a pop-up to share this Quizlet study set. So let's say there's a co-teacher that's teaching the same thing for math. We know as math teachers, we are overwhelmed. We have so much on our plate. So I would always be helping out a coworker. So if they're using Quizlet also, I would say, hey, I'm in the study set. I'm going to go ahead and just drop in their email real quick and send it to them. And then they'll get a copy. Now they will get a copy that they could then edit themselves. It's not going to affect your copy. Your copy is under your account. You're good to go. But let's say you send it to another algebra teacher and they're like, you know what? These problems we made are way too easy. I need to spice them up. I need to add more. They can go ahead. Once you send this to them, it's a copy and they can go ahead and edit to the, they please, how they please. And I will never know because it's not affecting my copy. I don't get a notification or anything like that. Let's say I have a teacher website and I want to go ahead and drop this quiz and studies that onto my teacher website. I just click copy link. Or let's say you use Google Classroom, use Remind, you use Microsoft Teams. I'm a Microsoft Teams person. This will directly integrate right into that, that platform. So it's so easy to share. So let's say I made a study set and I wanted my students immediately to just go ahead and do it because I just kind of scrambled the study set real quick. I could drop it into Microsoft Teams and they will get it immediately. It also does say about um, adding a class, add to a class or folder. Now, you guys, we all need to make sure we are creating classes. You don't want to start making Quizlet study sets and then have them all live on your profile page. You want to make sure that all of your study sets are properly placed in each class. You saw in my account that I have geometry study sets and algebra one study sets. I would not put it past some of my algebra one babes to click on a geometry study set by mistake. Or if I had someone in my algebra regular class, click on that honors final exam review instead of their regular CP level of the final exam review. 
So it's really, really important that we create classes so that our, our, all of our stuff is organized. And when students access your study sets in their class, they're gonna be able to study unlimited, even with a student free account. If they have a student free account and you're not putting your, your um, study sets into classes, they're not gonna be able to study unlimited. So you definitely wanna make sure you are setting up your classes. And that is definitely what I want to talk about um, next. So making a study set, super straightforward, copying and editing other study sets. Now we might find, and we know, we don't have time for everything. We just don't. So let's say you're like, I wanna create a study set. I have the time, I make one, it's ready to go. And the next day rolls around and you're like, oh my gosh, this lesson, I know I'm gonna have like 15 minutes left at the end of the period. This would have been such a great lesson for me to do a quick study set uh, lesson or do Quizlet live. What you want to do is you want to go into Quizlet and at the very top, you want to go to the search bar. In the search bar, it says study sets, textbooks, questions. And let's say you're like, I just really, I need to find something that saw another teacher made that made it public. I want to use that for my classes. So let's say I type in, um, I don't know, I'm thinking functions of graphs or graphs of functions. Let me just see what pops up. Oh, my pop, graphs of functions vocab. So this teacher created this study set. I might say, ooh, I think that that might be what I need to do. I can click into that study set and I could take a sneak peek and I could say, ooh, look what this teacher put together. And this is a good one that I picked you guys because she has problems that don't have graphs and problems that do have graphs. Now here's a Quizlet spoiler. If you have a paid account, I'm sorry, if you have a free teacher account, which again, I started off with for the first full year, you won't be able to put in pictures yourself, but you can use others, other Quizlet study sets that do have images in them. So let's say you have a free account and you find this and there's images in them, you can steal it and use it for your students. You just wouldn't be able to create your own. So that's a little behind the scenes Quizlet hack. So I might scroll through this and I might be like, I love this. This is exactly what my students need. And so what I'm gonna do then is I'm going to next to this, there's options, add to set class, uh, add to set to class or folder, save and edit or share. And I might be like, you know what? I'm gonna save this study set right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save and edit. When you click save and edit, it now is putting it onto your account. And so it says graphs of functions vocab. So this is what this teacher had named it. All of the problems that she had put in are right here. Okay, so all of the text, all of the images are here, all of the terms, everything I want. And maybe I'm looking at this going, you know what, I love all of these problems, but you know what, I think I need to change something. So maybe I wanna change the wording because I want it to match with how I describe something in class. Or maybe I might say to myself, you know what, I actually really wanna get rid of a couple of these problems because they don't speak to what I was teaching. On, at the, on the right hand side of any one of the study problems, you can just click the little trash can and it's gone. And so maybe I wanna do that with a couple of these. I wanna delete a couple of them, trash can, delete it, so it's gone. After that, after I've taken this study set that someone else created, added it to my own, I'm now gonna click create, okay? So this almost acts like as if I had made this all myself, which I didn't. I'm going to click create, it's going to save, and now I can share it the same way. Okay, I can share it all the same way. Now, the one way I wanna show you to share is how I mentioned that classes are really important. Okay, when you make a class, all of your students are gonna be able to access all these sets, right? So you're gonna click on add to class or folder. And if you were in my one-on-one session yesterday, you watched me make this algebra one period one class. All you have to do to add it into any of your classes is just click the little plus sign. After you click the plus sign, it's in there. Okay, and I'm gonna show you that this graphs of functions study set went into that class. And maybe I wanna add it to all of my algebra classes. I'm like, you know what, they all need it. All of my CP level classes and my honors class, but you know what, my geometry class, they don't need it. So I'm gonna leave it there. So a lot of us teach so many different subject areas. 
And so when you're grabbing a certain study set, imagine how easy it is right now for you to make one on your own or find a study set that someone else made and then immediately edit it to your needs and then drop it in. And then it's there. So now there's no submit button. There's nothing like that. You just simply click the X. I'm going to click over in my Quizlet account at the top where next to home, it says classes. I'm going to show you right now what my classes would look like. Okay. Um, and I'm going to show you next what that actually looks like when we go to put it together. So copying and editing other sets, super easy. So now why are we creating math classes? Well, creating classes will maximize the study set used for students with unlimited practice. Like I mentioned before, if you have students sign up, which this is what I do guys, first day, first day of school, I don't, I really just don't do anything super special. What I tend to do is I tend to show my students my classroom, tell them a little bit about what I'm going to bring to them this year. I like to show them what our notebook is gonna look like that we put together through the year. I like to show them a uh, little sample of the activities that we like to do in the classroom. I like to explain how my classroom is set up. We have tables and you know lots of activities that we do. And the other thing I do is I get them all hooked up with a Quizlet account along with some other accounts that we use throughout the year. And I have them go to quizlet.com and I have them create a student account. And they like to pick out their little avatar and it's cute. Um, and they like to pick on, you know, whether it's they're in dark mode, if that suits them, and they go ahead and they make their account. And then they join my math class. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to create a math class and then have your students join it. And like I mentioned before, if a student just makes a student account and then is going to your profile page and accesses your study sets, they'll be able to practice a couple of times, but there's going to be a time limit kind of put on them. Whereas if they're in your class, they're going to be able to practice those study sets for an unlimited amount. So we all definitely wanna make sure we are creating classes and dropping in study sets, whether we're making them ourselves or we're copying and editing them from another teacher. We wanna make sure that everything's nice and organized in our classes. So definitely, you know, titling each study set, I feel like is very important. And you can see you can personalize. So like I mentioned, I'm not dropping in my final exam algebra review into my geometry class. I don't need them to see that. And I'm certainly not dropping it into my regular level algebra class because they don't need that study set. So what I would do in Quizlet, and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make a class if you are not in my 101 or you kind of missed it yesterday at all, is at the top, you're going to create. I mean, Quizlet makes it very bright. It's a bright blue box that says create. We already made a study set there and that's where we create a class. So every teacher would go to class you're going to name your class. You want to be strategic about this. You know, don't make the name too small. Just make it totally what it should be. So I'm going to say that this is Algebra 1 Honors Period 2. And I don't need to enter a description. If you want to, you can. Teacher friends, we are most likely all going to be unchecking these two next boxes. Allow class members to add or remove sets. No, thank you. I think we can all agree. Allow class members to invite new members. No needed, not needed. I kind of see those two boxes as something that maybe like a higher level group is using. Uh, maybe it's like an AP class or super, super responsible students who are not gonna be adding and uh, deleting things. Um, college level classes, I feel like that works for very, very well because it's more of a collaborative effort. You know, if students are studying, they can drop in and say, I need this study set, you guys, for our quiz next week. Here, go ahead and use it. I tend to uncheck those boxes. Now, when you register as a teacher, you already put in what school you're from, so that's why it's defaulting to my school. If it's not there, you would just go to select school from list, and you're going to create your class. <coughs> Excuse me. So I click create class. And now my class is here and I can go ahead and I, I do this um, before school starts. I get all of my classes set up. Um, I might go into my other sets right now, the classes that I already have. I go and I delete all the previous students and I just have those studies, those classes already made, um, created. So my new year can come in. So I'm not redoing it every year, which is really helpful. Um, but you can go ahead and here's an invite link. So I can go ahead and copy that invite link and maybe drop it into Google, drop it into Remind, drop it into Microsoft Teams. Um, so that's really easy. And then it says add a study set. So I might open this up now, click add a study set. 
And I might say, oh my gosh, that study said I just made, I wanna add that one in and I click the plus sign. And as I click that plus sign, you'll see that study set is automatically there. And maybe I want them to have the math vocabulary study set. Ooh, and that graphs of function study set that we just made, I want them to have that too. And so as I click that in, they're now into this class and every student who signs up to be part of my Algebra 1 Honors Period 2 will have access to these study sets. You'll also see that there's a little view class progress tab um, and uh, there's other things that you would be able to do with this, which are pretty cool. So imagine you were doing this with your other classes, adding things in, um, you're gonna see a lot of great things happening. Um, after creating your classes and having everyone kind of join them and being really specific, I had a question yesterday about like, well, hey, if I teach five classes of the same subject and level, can I have them all join one? No, I wouldn't do that. I would have them separated by periods personally, because you want to be able to see individual progress that way. The impact. Uh, so much more practice is done when they are on Quizlet than on paper reviews, because paper is one and done. We know that. I feel like I'm not wasting paper so much anymore. They have all this access at their fingertips if we're using Quizlet in class or at home. That's amazing to me. You know, if I say to them, hey, we're practicing this study set in class, we're doing Quizlet live, and I have kids going, Ms. Yakbo, well, I did, I knew nothing. I knew nothing when we played Quizlet live. Like, I'd be like, well, here's the good news. That same study set we just played in class you now can just practice at home. And if you want to email me or send me a message specifically about any of those questions, you certainly can. If you want to see me in the morning or during lunchtime, you certainly can. So it's not like they're doing this practice in class and then it's completely separate from practice at home. They're the same problems. Um, I find that the engagement is magical when we're playing Quizlet Live. So if you learned about Quizlet Live yesterday, you got to go for it. At students enter in a code, you can see on my picture on my screen here, uh, this is what it looked like. Students are writing on whiteboards, figuring it out. Um, they're working together on the same problem, but only one student in the group has, excuse me, has the answer. And the live progress is up on the screen. It is so much fun. We have so much fun. What I've also found is that students have then been creating their own study sets for other classes. So they use Quizlet so much for me, but then they're like, hey, I could actually make my own study set for my health class because I have all these terms I have to memorize because basically, besides math, every other class is vocabulary based, right? So it's all terms and definitions, everything else. Um, and so then they kind of get inspired by using Quizlet for my class and they use it and set up for their other classes. It's such a time saver. Like I said, once you create the sets, you're good, unless you want to edit them. I tend to edit them, you know, here and there or add things to it, make it better. Um, and my students just absolutely love it. Love it, love it, love it. Um, so sorry about that, guys. So it is good. There is a teacher's guide to Quizlet. This has been posted in a lot of the sessions. Um, if there's something more specific, you want a hard copy of this general information, you can go to quizlet.com backslash teachers. That's where you'd be able to access a lot of just the general information about using Quizlet um, and getting started. So really easy website, quizlet.com backslash teachers. And I want to thank you guys. So I'm going to jump into the Q&A. We have about five minutes. So I'm going to answer some of those questions. It's possible that I'd already answered some. So if you find that I skipped over your question, please don't get upset. It's just probably that I had talked about it during the session. And again, this is all recorded. You're going to be able to rewatch these sessions as much as you possibly want. But if you ever want to reach out to me on social media, I am at Yakima Math on Twitter. I'm not as active as I used to be on there. I'm most active on Instagram at I teach algebra and my email is there if you ever wanted to email me. So I'm going to jump into some of my Q&A questions. Um, all right. So Scott asked about um, equation with division bars. So right now we don't have that. I think it's coming. I, Quizlet is adding more and more, and I just think it's only a matter of a very brief time that we're gonna get more of uh, being able to totally type in fractions and have more of a true equation editor. So I'm gonna put my, my money on that, that that's coming very soon. Um, I wanna make flashcards where you choose the correct equation out of four choices. Oh. Um, so that's something else too. You can alter, you can, when you have the plus account, you're able to manipulate the multiple choice answers, um, however you want them to be. Otherwise, Quizlet's just going to shuffle all of your solutions together. So that's definitely something you can do with the pro account. Um, does Quizlet have an option to speak to students? Yes. 
So Quizlet, next to each one of your cards in your study set, there's a little audio symbol. And sometimes when we're in class and I put a Quizlet problem up on my screen, I accidentally click the audio and it reads to my whole class out loud and we kind of get a laugh out of it, but it's so helpful. Um, my own daughter who's seven years old, sometimes I make a Quizlet study set for her, just practicing her addition facts or subtraction facts. She'll click on the audio button and it'll read the problem to her. And then she'll select like a multiple choice answer if she's doing the learn process. So um, definitely, it will speak to you. Um, how many questions do you usually put in your study sets? That to 200. Um, something I didn't get a chance to show here is I have all my individual lessons created for Algebra 1, and then there's an option in Quizlet where you can actually combine multiple study sets and put them into it. So if you're seeing, oh my gosh, she has a chapter seven test review that's got 200 questions, it's because I went to chapter seven, all the individual study sets I made, and I combined them and sent them into one and created a new study set. Uh, so you have an unlimited amount that you can add in, but you know it really is up to you um, what you would want to do. Is adding classes separate from sharing through Google Classroom? Yes. If you are going to use Quizlet this year with your students, as a teacher, the first thing you should be doing for sure, everyone, once you know what subjects you're teaching, what levels you're teaching, what periods you're teaching, is go into Quizlet and create a new class for each one of your classes. And that way, any study sets you want there to be in those classes, you are dropping in um, and your students are joining your class because that's the way the students are gonna get unlimited access to those sets. Okay, so you definitely want to do that. It's very different from Google uh, share to sharing. So Matthew asks, yes, they need, students are going to make their own account. So you encourage everyone to go to, you know, Quizlet.com. I do this the first or second day of school. They go ahead, they make their free student account. Um, and then I direct them either through a link through Microsoft Teams to join my specific class. They actually can also go to your Quizlet profile page. So right now, if you were to go to quizlet.com backslash Yakubuck Mouth, across the top, you'll see that it says classes. And if you were to click on classes, you'll actually see all those classes that I created. And so a student could do that too, and then be like, oh, well, I'm in her period two, and I'm gonna click on period two, and then there'll be a button to request to join. So um, that's what you wanna do. They're not gonna use like a Google account um, unless that that's how you're having them create their own personal Quizlet account of that. Last question I can get to is from Brittany about multiple sections of the same class. Would I recommend using one class? I would separate them, Brittany, for sure. That way it's so easy for you to check on period one separately from period two. Even though they're all getting the same study sets, it's definitely a much better option. Well, you guys, I'm all out of time for today. I want to thank you so much for joining me here today. I hope it was helpful for you. I'm going to kind of scroll a little bit through the chat to see how we are doing. But you guys, thank you so much. Um, we have a 15-minute break until the next session. So uh, Ken, uh, Kenzie from Quizlet just posted. So if you need to go grab a snack, kind of stretch, um, please do that. If you have any questions, please reach out to me on Instagram or shoot me an email. I would love to answer your questions. I'm passionate about Quizlet and I think if you're using it too, you will feel the same. Thank you so much, you guys.